بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome back to another Elm Feed podcast with your host Shabir Hassan excited to be back again hope you're all having uh, a great day so far um, we've got another great uh, episode for you all um, this one's again slightly different why because we have not just one guest but we have two guests however both of these guests are from uh, a similar background you could say so basically what we're looking at uh, are two young imams mashallah um, who have studied whether it's in this country whether it's abroad and uh, they have come back to uh, their local communities and they're giving something back they're leading their local mosque uh, and they're doing some amazing work so we're going to find out more about that today inshallah uh, our first guest of course uh, is someone mashallah that I've known for quite some time now though we haven't met enough uh, so I'm glad to have him here to pick his brains uh, today. He's none other than Sheikh Qadi Ashikh Rahman, the Imam of Darul Umma Mosque in East London. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. How are you, Sheikh? Okay. Alhamdulillah. Fine. How are you, Sheikh? Okay. Alhamdulillah. Very, very well. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much for joining us. Barakallah. And uh, we also have someone that I've uh, become more acquainted with uh, in more recent times. Uh, one of the Imams, a young Imam uh, from Nurul Islam Mosque. Or Nurul Islam Trust, as is also known as uh, Imam Ibrahim Surti. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you? Alhamdulillah, bi khair. How are you? Alhamdulillah, very, very well. So, honestly, we, we really appreciate uh, both of you, you know, coming out and taking your time out. Um, to join us on the podcast. Uh, I'm sure you guys have been keeping up with some of the episodes. Uh, so it's amazing to have you here in the studio um, to inshallah share some of the experiences. So both of you are Imams. Um, both, uh, like we said, like similar backgrounds kind of thing, right? You both studied, mashallah, uh, over over the span of many years. Um, starting with uh, Sheikh, Sheikh Ashq Rahman, I mean, you studied in Egypt, right? Yeah, so something yeah. quite different. Uh, Al Azhar yeah, as well, University, alhamdulillah, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, and uh, for those of for those of you watching, you can see his hat. So. That kind of gives it away. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. you got to be a bit careful, like, because <laughs> last time I was in a talk and it was like one of them smaller messages. We'll, yeah. we'll speak, we'll do, I'll answer your question in a moment. Yeah, yeah, brought yeah. it up. There was like a young chap who was like, look at the guy with the red hat. And it was around Christmas time. So he's probably oh thinking I was trying God. to put one of them. Funny, yeah, just to like, you know. And then I, 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 had to, I had to speak to him. I was like, no, 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 it's, it's not what you think. It's, it's actually the hat from Egypt. Like, oh, wow. Yeah. You know what it is, though? Like, is that is so? Is this hat like a sign that I don't know? You've graduated. This is from a Azhari hat. This is called. It's called a tarbush. Tarbush, tarbush. yeah. And those okay. who make it are called tarabishis. So basically, it's um, the base of it is a fez hat. It's like a woolly hat, mm. which is um, molded and shaped with uh, uh, heat and fire and stuff mm. to the shape that it's in. And then that's attached with a string at the back, which is which used to flow before, but then it's been made to tie down because that's more organized more mm-hmm. smart and then it's uh, wrapped up with the imama yeah. which which is the pagri you could say yeah. and the imama obviously has got many many ways you could do the imama mm-hmm. you could have a tail you could have the technique which goes around your neck uh, and in this particular zahra at the moment it doesn't have a tail it's kind of folded in uh, and so yeah it's just it's just a hat that 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 demarks or mentions that you're an azhari either a student or a graduate or a scholar or a professor but you are azhari in that sense connected to azhar okay. a product of azhar yeah, or a student of azhar very interesting but the thing is i swear i'm pretty sure a lot of people just buy the hat now and just probably just probably it. but you'd get caught <laughs> you'd get caught <laughs> people would know that you either were or yeah? you didn't yeah inshallah yeah, uh, and uh, i'm sure imam ibrahim do you have some history behind your hat as well my hat <laughs> this is a normal kufi <laughs> buy it for one pound from the shop you know what i did even know that we we're going to go so deep into the hat discussion but that's yeah. fine alhamdulillah so um let's talk about because since both of you are imams at at uh, two different mosques um, still not too far from each other uh, within london um i want to know and i'm sure our listening uh, listeners and viewers they want to know um what does an imam get up to uh on a daily basis why why i'm asking this is because a lot of people just assume that uh, an imam just basically, you know, might just come for the salah, lead the prayer, mm-hmm. go back home again. Doesn't really have much more of a life, you know, just leads the prayer. Or, you know, in addition, might just be some teaching. That's about it, you know, Juma. that's about it. So we want to know, like, since you guys have been doing this for for some time now, what does an imam get up to? Especially like in, in, in this country, you know, like, is it different? Is is it just that? So mm-hmm. so go ahead, inshallah. Tfadal, Sheikh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know that story, so I think she gets started. Um, 
to be honest, it's 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 a busy day. It's a busy day. Mm. Um, um, like you said, we teach. At, you know, some imams teach on the side. Some do. Some are head teachers. So yeah, they'll yeah. run the madrasa. Mm. Um, during the day, we have a normal life. We have a mm. normal life. Alhamdulillah, um, because some people think we're some. You know, how how can I say it? Some. What's the word to use? Um, I can't really think of a word right now. Some supernatural people. Yeah, so like it's, just, just it, yeah, doing, doing everything basically. Yes, they they think that there's people that we can't approach. That's what mm. it is. They very you know they have their life and they must be doing dhikr at home the whole night. <laughs> and mashallah, that's what they do. Not, the not human day. beings basically. Just yeah. like you know we can't approach. No, we these have people. we also have a life. We also do you know day to day stuff. But connected to the imam job, yeah, connected to the imam job. So, Things which are related mm. to the to an imam is you know talking and and you know counselling. Mm. We have cases people coming you know on a day to day basis. We have cases upon cases, certain cases which we can't deal with, and mm. certain cases which we try our best to help with. Um, let's say for because I, I'm 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 alhamdulillah I'm a young person, a young imam. So we have young people coming to us with different types of problems. Yeah. So we have to deal with these problems. Sometimes it takes hours, sometimes it takes months, weeks. We have to deal with these things. Mm. Um, it's not part of our job. It's not part of the contract that the masjid laid out for us. We have to do this for the sake of Allah, to help them. Something mm. which if we can do, if it's in our hands and we can help them, then we would help these people. Let's just say some people, they have such problems. Believe me, people don't know this. And I mention this sometimes in the khutbah. It's amazing what you know what people are going through. Mm. People just recently on there's some talking Thursday. We had this brother. He came to me, and he was he had so many questions, and he yeah. said, "Okay, we'll keep talking until we keep speaking until you know uh, until maybe you get tired." That's how, and he had so many questions. He was asking about um, you know just he's, he's at the brink of leaving the fold of Islam. Um, so he wants to know. He he wants answers. So he thought, "I'm young. Mm. Let's." Have, so I thought, "Okay, let's have a, let's have a chat." So we sat down and we we had tea, um, we had a cup of tea and we we spoke about you know just n- normal stuff at first and then he was asking all these questions. So we have to deal with these things on a day day to day. Then we have, for example, maybe we might talk about this later on. We have marriage issues. Some people they're not getting married. They have issues at home. They want us to go go and speak to their parents. Maybe he likes uh, someone. He's in love with someone. Um, she's a Muslim sister, for example, but she's mm. not from her from his culture. He might not be, the brother might be Bengali, for example, and he, she is uh, maybe Gujarati, Indian, mm-hmm. or from another culture. And we have to deal with this. We have to try to amend this, try to put them together. So wow. these are just examples, for example. <clears throat> this is what we have to deal with. Sheikh mostly has more things. Yeah, he's more, he's more, you know, he has more things to do, mashallah, than me. But this is what we, this is what we, this is what we, have, we have to deal with. But that's the thing, you know, like a lot of people don't know this, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you, you've mentioned, you know, sitting down, having a cup of tea. Uh, because you have to have that approach you can't just like take them into the office all the time and make it formal right like you have to have some tea with them socialize with even the youngsters try and be a bit more relatable to them and then like you said the problem subhanallah like you've mentioned so many different examples right now from marriage to like you know just normal day-to-day counseling to problems it's crazy but so many people don't know this that's why i'm asking you guys like i want to i want to know myself so uh sheikh Enlighten us. What do you get? Uh, what, what was the question again? If we just say the question, because <laughs> <laughs> like, Sheikh had uh, so many things, and Alhamdulillah, of course, these these are mutual and um, yeah, yeah. these are similar issues that we have to also deal with because uh, the community is more or less similar. We're not too far apart. You're uh, a bit further down east, and I'm just here and more closer to here. So Alhamdulillah, uh, the community is similar, and so the problems are also similar. But if you just ask me the question again, so I'll. Be able what is the name? Like, what do you get up to as an imam uh, on okay. a day-to-day basis? Basically? Okay. Is it just leading prayers? Or okay, I will be left on Rasul Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin of the Salat Wa Tasim Allah Sayyidina Nabi Muhammad Wa Ala Alihi Wa Ashabi Ajma'in. Imam's job is actually a very big one, and the responsibility of an imam is, is very broad and uh, very um, flexible in the sense that it's not particularly one job that you can sign into and sign out. Nine o'clock sign in, five o'clock sign out. Uh, an imam's uh, job is more of a role, it's a responsibility that that follows you home uh, it's an image it's someone that you are in society mm. so it's not just you know pressing some buttons on a computer you are literally an imam someone that's put forth in any situation whether it be a media issue whether it be a family issue whether it be a local issue whether it be the salah itself which you are put forth for for leading it and so yes the salah defines 
our activity in terms of leading the salawat. And so when I say to someone um, that I don't lead all the salahs in Darul Ummah, in fact, I only lead a few of the salahs, and they think, okay, I thought you lead all five of the salahs because that mm. is effectively the main job or job of leading the salah. And perhaps that is the most important job, of course. There is nothing more important than the yeah, salah itself. Yeah. But of course, like Sheikh said, um, there are so many other responsibilities attached to it. But just to also clarify, we have those who think it's just a, a small leading salah, and we have on the other side, other people that think that this, because this person is an imam, he must be like Imam Abu Hanifa or like mm-hmm. Al-Imam or yeah, you know the imam that you think of, some, uh, Ahmad ibn Hanbal and Al-Shafi'i because these are also imams. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so the word, yes, we are humbly being referred to with those words, but there is a vast, a huge amount of difference between that imam and us imams. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm talking about myself, of course, here. Yeah. And so there has to be that uh, sort of, you know, balance in terms of we're not exactly just leading the salahs, nor are we the, uh, the mujaddids of our qarn, of our, of our generation, right? And so, yes, leading the salahs, as well as um, teaching. Uh, teaching meaning educating. Mm-hmm. So not necessarily just teaching nine to five, or sorry, uh, five to seven, but teaching as, as you walk. Mm-hmm. You are teaching people how to stand, how to walk, how to speak, how to carry yourself, how to study, everything. You are a teacher continuously. And so um, you are educating and teaching continuously, whether it be a formal lesson of a fiqh class or a hadith class, or whether it be just someone watching you as you're praying. Mm. Because imams are watched, and for a good reason, and they should be watched, because of course, imagine there was no no one watching the imam, then that would be another problem because you'd have no followers. And so um, imams are watched, so they're an example all the time. And of course, uh, like Sheikh said, advice and counselling to the community, dealing with social issues, visiting elderly people, uh, attending to needs of, a, of, of the local uh, uh, problems. So we have, for example, ruqya issues. Mm. And imam is like a signpost. Yeah. Right? You go there, you say, I need, I need this. And if the signpost or if the computer, the vending machine, if you can give the prob- answer to the problem, then you give it. Mm. So if you say, for example, something like, how do I say this in Quran, I'll give the answer because I know. Right? If you say, fiqh, you must Allah, I know the answer, I'll say it to you. But if say, for example, something like ruqya related, then I'll say, sorry, I don't do ruqya. So you go there. Mm. If it's something medical related, then you go there. If it's something, say, mm. for example, legal related, then you go there. So we are, in that sense, we, we are signposts in the sense that we direct people towards the right direction. And so it's a broad responsibility and uh, it's not attractive to everyone. It's, yeah. it's, it's a huge responsibility because let's be honest, I mean, everyone wants to have some time to themselves. You want to go work, you want to come home and do your own thing. As an imam, you're walking down your street, you're trying to go to the local shop just to pick up some, I don't know, fruits or vegetables. <laughs> and like, oh, Sheikh, how are you? Okay, can I just ask you a question? Yeah. And so you are that person and you can't say no to it because that is, because effectively you are representing the role of the Prophet Sallallahu in his community, Sallallahu. someone who is uh, there for advising and educating and etc. So it's a huge role. Uh, and so I think these are some of the things that make up when Imam is. Um, I don't know if I answered no, the question. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, think, I think from from what I've gathered from both of you, yeah. um, you know, we learn that it is a very, very broad role. And like you said, I think the key, key, key part of what you said was it's not a nine to five job. You can't just walk in and walk out. You can't clock in no, and clock out like yeah. it's... Uh, yeah, I, and I know exactly. I, I know I can see exactly where you're coming from because the imams that even we've accessed and we've come across before, um, it's the same thing. Like you see them, like I swear I came here in the morning and the imam was here, and then I swear I've come here in the evening and he's still here. Like what's going on, you know? Um, so Subhanallah, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala reward both of you for for your efforts um, I mean, as no. imams. And you, Sheikh Shabir, you also do khutbahs. Probably you haven't said that to me, William, but mashallah, <laughs> you, you're a khutib yourself, mashallah. I will come to khutbahs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he came to a masjid, mashallah. He let the, mashallah, he let the go, Jum'ah so, in Nur Islam. Just, uh, even our Baisal who's doing the <laughs> recordings also, mashallah. mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. No, it's, it's, it's amazing uh, to be able to connect with them. Um, with fellow imams, mashallah, but I know you, you two are much more experienced, so that's why that's what we're trying to get from you. So, I mean, the, because of the hat discussion, we kind of t- diverted. <laughs> so we were saying that you, of course, studied in Egypt, yeah. and then uh, Sheikh Ibrahim studied uh, locally, not locally, but north of the country in Bari, actually graduated. So let's talk a bit about that. Um, and then, because I, I just want to know why, like, for example, you went to Egypt or you went to Bari, and then you decided to come back... Um, to your local mosque, local community, and give something back there. You know, when when so many people they could have they could have gone elsewhere. They could have they could have gone to another part of London. They could have gone outside of London. They could have gone abroad. And so many opportunities nowadays, Subhanallah. Um, so why? Like, I just want to hear from you both. Why did you decide to come back to give to your local community? And what's so important about that? Mm. 
شيخ تفضل You guys are being too formal, by the way. Let me let me go. Okay, fine. Let me go. Last time you let me go now. All right. So, um, why are we choosing to uh, pursue um, our careers mm. in the field that we studied in? It seems I think the answer is there, because effectively our study was of the Quran, of the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and of of course the fiqh and the sciences that come out of it. These two um, uh, sources of wahi or revelation and knowledge, and so I would say. For those who have studied in madaris and in Islamic institutions, it is only normal that you go back to convey and to, and to serve your and to educate your 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 people, your your uh, your communities. And so, of course, this is the uh, this is the lesson that we learn from even the Quran. You know, mm-hmm. that had it not been or had if there should be some people from every community that some go, they learn and they come back and educate. And so that is how it should work. You learn so that you can pass on. It's not there is no such thing as kitman ul ilm. You can't hide knowledge. Mm-hmm. And so it is, I think, uh, natural that you should work in the field that you have expertise in. And I know, obviously, in this day and age, um, you know, the, the the work is very sort of flexible. Uh, mm-hmm. Someone who, for example, studied law could be working in a supermarket, and that could that can happen. And there's nothing wrong with that, if because end of the day is talabul risk is also from the ibad as long as you are doing it for the right intention. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think what makes work enjoyable, um, and and you can benefit more, and you can benefit the people more, is if it is in the field that you have specialized in. And so me. As a humble student of knowledge who has learned some Quran, some Sunnah, uh, some Fiqh, etc., it's only normal that I should just convey it to my local community, and so that I think is a responsibility more than <coughs> more than a choice. It is a choice, of course, but it's also a responsibility. Yeah. Mm, very good. Yeah, I mean that that ayah in the Quran does does kind of you know it, it mentions that point basically. Come back to your people, yeah, you know, yeah. your qawm, your people, and give something back. And I guess what's important about that is the fact that. You understand your people better than anyone else, right? You know, if you get someone else, you know, I'm sure I'm sure they can do a great job, but they don't understand the needs of that particular yeah. community. Even though it, they might be from London, for example, but then how would you know within East London? Like you guys, you, you're both from different areas in East London. I'm sure the the needs of the community are different. So that's a really important point, Sheikh Ibrahim. Uh, same question, basically. Um, like, how, why do you think it's so important in your community? So let's say, you know, the Leighton Stone or the, the Leighton, Wartham Stone area, Wartham Forest. Why is it so important for you to go back and give um, there? To be honest, I agree and exactly what he said, what mm. Sheikh said right now. But um, the question that you asked, why in this country, you know, because Sheikh went to Egypt. Egypt, yeah. Um, to be honest, in my area at that time, as we're talking 2006, 2007, mm. um, there were a lot of young, you know, young lads. They were going to Dalumbari. Okay. And, you know, we just heard about you know Dalumbari, Dalumbari. We had approximately fifteen boys at the moment. I think there's only one or two going. Uh, one of my students, he's applied, uh, then a reference for him. So I'm trying to, you know, send, mm. you know, you know, what's the um, trying to, um, what's the word? Try to uh, convince them. Yeah. You've gone Dalum is good. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's good. Encourage them. So. When I found about Dalumbari, I thought, yeah, this is good. Mm. You know, why not? After So even when I left school, when I left school, I went to a state school, mixed school. And after I left, I actually applied for college. But I don't know what happened. I just decided, you know, I want to actually go and study Islam, mm. learn something. So I asked my parents and then um, I found out what's the best Dalum in this in the country. And I was told it's Dalumbari because it's the, it's the hub of the country. That's mm. where the first Dalum began, you know. Yeah. Um, after that, all the students came out from there, different, different Dalums came about and even different masajid mm. so alhamdulillah i went there i studied i came back now my local masjid is not nural islam my local masjid is actually masjid umar and masjid umar is is maybe you know five minute walk from my house okay so and that, at that time there were imam already there there were two imams there so i couldn't um, become an imam there so my brother brother-in-law he works at well he used to work at nural islam he said to me um do you want to join nural islam they're looking for Imam. Mm. I thought, you know what? That would be good because I would go there, a bit of experience, but I didn't have intention to stay there for years. Mm. Not long term, maybe a few months, maximum one year. And then that's it. It would be something, it's a good experience. Um, and even money wise, you can, it's, when I came out of Dalum, you do need something. You need some means of, you know, to, you know, to support the family. So I decided, okay, I'll, I'll start Nur Islam. 
But as I was in this process, I've learnt, and the points that which Sheikh said, mm. that came to mind. That this is this is what I want to do, and I saw there is a there's a huge um, demand mm. for a young imam, and um, so yeah. Th- then I decided just to uh, I stayed, and then Nur Islam is not too far from my house. It's still local, yeah. but I didn't used to go there for salah. My local masjid, like I said, <coughs> was Masjid Umar. Alhamdulillah, since then, 2014, I've been in this masjid. And I haven't left. I don't have intention to leave Nur Islam. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah yeah. That's 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 like you know it was like like you said you didn't plan to do it but alhamdulillah you know things things worked out <clears throat> and um, obviously there's a lot of there's a lot of activities going on in both of the messages from what I've seen alhamdulillah and sure. I think both of you as imams you're pioneering that which is great but I want to come back to another point right which is what Sheikh uh, Ashkur Rahman you mentioned about being under the spotlight as a, especially as a young imam yeah so you're the fact that you're an imam anyway you're going to be under the spotlight more and of like course, you said it's yeah. not for it's not always for a bad reason it's for good course, reason yeah. as well people want to look up to you people will say you know you're the imam so therefore what what you do you know would therefore i would kind of follow because that's the the translation of an imam basic translation would be a leader right mm. so um but then there might be a maybe a negative spin on that as well yeah, sure, uh, which which yeah. i want to which i want to hear about from your own maybe personal yeah. lives <clears throat> like how have you dealt with that and what have you had to deal with one thing is dealing and one thing is just before Sheikh speaks, believe me, <laughs> I would like to comment on this. You know, it's yeah. not just about how we dealt with it. It's how some things you can't even deal with. You can't deal with it because it's yeah. not something that you... It's not like a solution. Mm. There's no solution to it. It's what people do. The Imam is, 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 is a role where people are just looking at you constantly. Mm. When you go to the supermarket, what you are purchasing, <laughs> uh, when you're walking. <laughs> believe me, they... You might, I don't know if it was a joke or <coughs> if my teacher was being sarcastic, but one of my teachers, Malazi Al Rahman, so what he said was, um, I don't know if he was joking, yes, I don't know. <laughs> he said once, I don't know if he was himself or yeah, he was, yeah. it was, it was an imam. Mm. So he was in the toilet and he was, you know, doing his stinger, washing himself. And what happened was, he, when he came out of the toilet, he done his wudu and then he was going away. And after a few brothers were having a conversation in Gujarati, I'm not going to speak that right now. Okay. So they were saying, um, in, in Gujarati language They were saying The Imam He filled up Six lotas He filled up six uh, How do you say lota in English? It's, the, a, it's, 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 like, a, it's a can It's a jug <laughs> Jug it's like Jug Yeah jug yeah. Plastic jug To clean yourself The Imam used six So he must have been the, In the next cubicle yeah, Listening yeah, to the yeah, Imam okay. So this is a bit extreme But at times People do look at you Even your salah The way they the way you pray, or he went too fast, he, he, he must have done only two subhan rabbi ala. He must have been two subhan rabbi al This might be extreme, but believe me, this, 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 this does happen. At the same time, like you said, um, when you mentioned about the, the positive side, that's good, mashallah. And people do look up, uh, look up to us, and they, they, they respect us, and they come to us, and they speak to us. Young, mm. young, you know, young children, when you're walking, they stop you, and they meet you just to do salam. He feels nice. But at the same time, there are those one yeah, or two, yeah, yeah. You, uh, well. you know, those... Uh, individuals who want to just make you know pick on the imam yeah. let's go and ask the imam a very hard <laughs> question you know this is a hard question controversial you want to know the answer to this so alhamdulillah this is this is what happens at times yeah man sure you're definitely right in the sense that of course there is a uh, because it's such a continuous and such a um uh, such a thing that sort of just carries on there isn't like um, of course you know on your day off you're sort of in your own um space you're you're going shopping or going for a day trip with your family and no one really knows you there so it's okay you can sort of you know take your hat off literally like you know <laughs> um because um uh, of course wearing a hat is of course a sunnah but of course for leading and for educating like i said there is a different uh, for tarbiyah the emphasis is is different mm. and so uh, i don't like to look at everything negatively in the sense that oh why do i have to always wear a hat I try to be optimistic, and that's just probably just the personality. So, um, yes, it's 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 a, it's a lot of strain, mm. but wallahi, you know, we've got to, we've got to take it positively because what else can you do? You can't if you just take it negatively, then it's just gonna add to the to the to the burden of being an imam already. And so, Allah says in the Quran, وَإِذِ بَتَلَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمَّهُنْ قَالَ إِنِّي جَعَلُكَ لِلنَّاسِ إِمَامًا. And of course, this imam is of course the imam and leader for the whole of mankind, and so that's a much larger imam. But the imam, of course, of a local community, of a local masjid is also huge in the sense of responsibility. And so we learn from this is that Allah actually chooses what you do. So you as an imam, it's of course, it's, it's a series of choices and a, and a life choice that you've made. But ultimately, there are loads of other ulama mm. can recite Quran better than mm. you. 
no more fiqh than you, no more hadith than you, more qualified than you, and yet they have not been given the honor of leading the entire masjid in salah in front of Allah Azza wa Jal. And so it's a huge honor. And so this honor has to come from Allah. Mm-hmm. He gives izzah to who he wants and he degrades whom he wants. And so if you look at it from that perspective, mm. in fact, Allah has honored me. Maybe I'm just at the beginning of my career, so I'm just kind of, you know, being a bit more optimistic. Let's see what happens. <laughs> but of course, yes, I do feel this strain in the sense, that, uh, in the sense, like because of the things that we've mentioned before. Uh, but if you look at it positively, that, you know, perhaps uh, this sense of CCTV watching will in fact encourage me Maybe sometimes even force you to, but it's it's for the good thing. It's not like mm. this watching is making you go and do more sins. It's making you more 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 careful, more, more specific, well, yeah. more conscious in your ibadah. And so, if you look at it from that pers- positive angle, then perhaps perhaps it's not so bad if, if you know what I mean. But of course, there are those who are probably just going to come and ask you a silly question. And an imam again is a very flexible person, like I said. So if you're going to be silly with me, I'll give you a silly <laughs> answer back. So so you'll know that you know it's not just a, this imam is not just like you know a hat and a jubba. He's actually uh, he can speak to me in the way that I speak to him as well, yeah. um, and so yeah, I think it's, it's it's a lot of strain, and and but it, if you, if you look at it positively and do it for the sake of Allah, if you have that ikhlas that I'm only doing for the sake of Allah, then I, I believe that it can become easy, easier, and and you can look at it from a a lighter perspective. We're supposed <laughs> to keep it jolly, but do you know what it is? I think it's going to be a bit hard yeah. uh, to keep it all um, uh, sort of humorous because obviously we're talking about some serious topics. Yeah, so course, we'll have that balance, inshallah. Yeah. But you, but you might as well give us an example, like you know, have you have you ever responded like in that? Well, I sometimes <laughs> it's a, it's a serious problem. Yeah. But it seems funny at the time, and you don't know what to do about it. Okay. For example. This brother comes and asks me, he's serious. Mm. It's a serious problem. This brother comes and asks me, my son physically beats me up and I can't do anything about it. His son is 12 years old. <laughs> okay. That sounds funny, right? Yeah, it's yeah, I like 12 year old son being. I can imagine. That. But the thing is, he says to me that this guy, he's bigger than me in size now. And when he hits me, he actually means it. And if I report him to the police, social service will take him away. And so you don't, you don't know whether to laugh. Wow. Of course, you can't laugh. Yeah, no, of course. You've got to keep it serious because <clears throat> it's an advice and counselling session. Of course, we haven't mentioned any names or any, any addresses, so it's, a, it's just an example to learn from. But uh, this is one scenario. Alhamdulillah, so far I haven't faced anyone that's sort of just come to take the mic. And even if they have, I haven't noticed. So mm. let's see what happens <clears throat> in, the fu- in the future months and years. But it's, it's, it's difficult, though, isn't it? Like, because yeah, just from you saying that, yeah, I can imagine, like, you must be scratching your head thinking, how on earth is that even possible? Like, like, you, have to, you, have to, you have to keep your composure. You have to keep, you know, it reminds me of a story. Um, one of my teachers, he told us about Imam Sha'bi, uh, where someone came and asked him a silly question one day. He was like, uh, Sheikh, what's the, what was the name of the wife of Iblis? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it's the most pointless question. There's no yeah. benefit in asking these questions. So in response, you know, in order to just educate this man, he said, look, I didn't attend his wedding. <laughs> so it's a good response right so yeah, yeah, it just kind of yeah, shows yeah. sometimes you do have to give that yeah. uh, type of response back so same question for Imam Ibrahim have you faced like um, any like silly questions or you know people no, just coming up to you the answer is yes for sure yeah yeah that's, that's a definite but I just can't remember at the moment but there's one incident which I would like to tell you it might not be a question okay but so mashallah you came recently to Nur Islam yeah yeah and you led the salah beautiful voice beautiful speech so you know when you led the salah on the musalla sajada yeah? yeah 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 what colour was it Check his, memory, isn't it? Check his memory. <laughs> I can't remember, you know well, that. It was like uh, uh, red, red, red or something. Red, come on, what's going on, man? <laughs> it's alright. Your half it's okay. is looking Was, it, was it, it Umfid orange? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it was uh, brown. The brown. Yeah, brown the big yeah, musalla, okay. yeah? Nice okay. and comfortable. So on the musalla, this has been our um, musalla for, since I've started. <clears throat> Maybe a few months, it was okay. a different sajada. So what is, you know on the on this sajada, sajada musalla, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, there are some images. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Now, what it is, these images, according to me, and you know, according to the main Imam, our Sheikh Yusuf, it it doesn't represent anything. Yeah, it, it's mm-hmm. just it, it, to me, it looks like chandeliers. That's what it is. Um, it's like a cartoon pictures. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just images, not pictures, like an image. So there's one musalli in the masjid. We have to obviously, like Sheikh said, we have to deal with it. And you can't just say no, get out of here, bago mm. yasi. Yeah, <laughs> what, what is this? So we have to deal with it in the best way. So he he's. Constantly te- coming to me and telling me, look, we have to get rid of this musalla. Okay. I'm thinking, why? What, what, mm. what happened? Said, look, there is shaitan. <laughs> shaitan. There is shaitan. I'm thinking, 
like you said, that time I couldn't laugh. But right now, yeah. it's funny. But that time wasn't funny. I'm thinking, shit, what are you on about? Why did you ask him to buy a new carpet? <laughs> that would have solved the problem. <laughs> no, no, no that's, that was his intention. He wants, to, oh, okay, he, okay, he wants to bring another uh, musalla, but there's brothers that have been there, they purchased that, and they said, look. There's like this history. Yeah, like it's, he's okay, been there for so many years. And to be honest, I like that musalla. He brought another one. And okay, if you do want to amend that situation, why don't you bring a... A, a musalla which is similar to that one, nice and comfortable. Yeah, yeah. He brought some thin <laughs> mat. It must have been from you know from 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 you know made out of straw or something. It was so uncomfortable. So I'm thinking, look, that is not the that. But anyway, so he, what he done? He rolled it up. Mm. He actually rolled it up and he <clears throat> and he hid it. Okay, well he did. He, he didn't rolled it up. He hid it. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm not lying. This. <laughs> so that time it was it obviously it was a serious matter, but right now it just seems funny. Oh, but yeah, this is what yeah, happened. Yeah. So. Some brothers saw it. They saw him, and they they obviously reported to the office, the mm. trustees. They spoke to me. I didn't even know this, and they and then there was this problem going so around. It became in the like a proper like talking this point was as a, well. Because yeah? in wow. in the masjid, there's not many problems. In, Alhamdulillah, in my masjid, there's not many <laughs> problems. So when a problem does occur, it becomes something big. <laughs> and what happened was they, I don't I don't know why, but they were thinking it's me. It's the imam has taken this musalla. I haven't wow. done that. I like that musalla. I like it. Tarawi is beautiful. I love it. You know, I'm already stressed out. I'm, I'm getting loads of mistakes and I'm, I'm proper sweat. I'm sweating. It's really hot. It's summer oh, as it is. Oh, that musalla oh, does, you know, it does a bit yeah, of justice, yeah, yeah. mashallah, a bit of comfort. So you can't be just taking the musalla away. But I had mm. to answer in the best way. I said, look, maybe it might seem like some Im- images, but it's not. Yeah. That's just your imagination. <laughs> it's just your imagination. They look like chandeliers to me. It's, it's Makkah. It's chandeliers coming down. Yeah. This is one issue. This is one problem. Even in the salah, yeah. I am. I would say ninety nine percent sure that Sheikh will agree with this. Is especially when we started um, many years ago. Our salah maybe is too fast, too slow. Mm. Now, I'm not exaggerating to you. Some brothers were saying, "Brother, look, you pray, you pray too fast." Okay. I thought, Barakallah, fi, just, uh, I'll take that into consideration. Literally, I'm not exaggerating. One day after, two days after. Brother, you're praying too slow. <laughs> you're you're reading your, the recitation is too slow. So too fast over there, too slow over there. And then another brother comes to me and he says, "Look, you know when you, after Sami Allah Huli Hamida, you just wait for yeah, a while. Yeah. We want to do the du'a. Rabbana wa laka alham. It's too fast. Even though I do a long one, Rabbana wa laka alham. Then kathir and طيب and barak and fi. Just so everyone gets time. Mm-hmm. But he said, no, that's too fast. And then in ruku in sujood, this is what we uh, you know at at the beginning people yeah, come yeah, to yeah, us. Yeah. Um, even Tarawi is normal. People come. One brother mm. came to me. He this is a new one, mashallah. He said, <clears throat> he said, brother, I think you you need to do Imam. You need to do your homework tomorrow. <laughs> he said <laughs> this to you. Yeah. This is what wow. he said to me. Okay. Wow. So at that moment, I, I was actually quite angry. I'm thinking, look, I tried the whole day, literally, since yeah, yeah. after Tarawi finishes, let There's alone so the next day, we in. actually be- begin the, the 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 straight after Tarawi. We actually start. Revision People don't know next, this. Yeah, yeah. They they think we just go on the musalla and we start Allahu Akbar and we start praying and you know everything. Jibril Ali Salam is just doing wahi to us. It doesn't work like that. It's, it's difficult, and people are complaining. So, but like oh, Sheikh said, we have to just take it. You know, I think yeah. it's making us spiritually, it's making us strong. Maybe it's making us stronger in in our, in our anger, yeah. having patience. You know, Alhamdulillah. Just Alhamdulillah. No, it's interesting to hear these stories. Oh, the stories are good, man. Love so much. <laughs> it's good stories. It, it just gives you just like a, a small insight into the life of an imam that a lot of people don't know about. Like even Tarawih, for example. Yeah, it's, uh, you're right because a lot of people think that <laughs> the imam just comes. After Salat al Aisha, you know, he has a quick look at his mouth. I wish that was the case. And oh, he, I wish that was the case. Wish, right? Make dua, we wish man. that that was the case, but it's not, unfortunately. And, and like you said, there's so up. much effort. Ha- <laughs> <be> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I've heard of him. His hobby is solid. No, no. I know that. <laughs> I wish. Inshallah. Inshallah. No. Uh, it was really good to get that insight. But on a more serious note, though, you know, even the, the Prophet as, a, as an Imam, you know, it's. Uh, we we can learn a lot from him uh, as an example um how he when when he used to lead the people he used to take everything into consideration of course, even yeah. subhanallah even the women the children there babies that would cry he would shorten the prayer um people who were elderly he took all of this in consideration so now there's so much we can learn from that example but that's i think that's another topic i want to just move away from the 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 role of the imam and come towards the masjid itself the the role of the mosque itself um again because uh, just like we said with the imam, you know, the, is the role of the imam just leading the salah? Similarly, is the role of the mosque just to facilitate for the prayers? Or do you feel like, you know, like, for example, the name of the masjid, Darul Ummah, yeah? <laughs> How would you translate that? 
It's obviously Dara Dur is basically it um, uh, in its meaning is mm. when somewhere you keep on going back and forth from. <clears throat> yeah. You sort of, you know, you're you're going there, you're coming out. It's not exactly like bait where we sleep and rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it has got that meaning of coming back and forth for mm. all of your needs. And Ummah of course means the whole nation. Yeah. And so it's the home or the place of visitation for the whole Ummah. Mm. And that is Obviously, we try our best to live up to that name, whereby we are welcoming people of all ages, of all backgrounds, mm. um, of all religions even, to come and um, have a discussion, to visit us, uh, to ask any questions. Uh, mm. We are a home, literally. We are a place, uh, alhamdulillah, where we have a madrasa, we have evening madrasa, we have uh, visit my masjid days, we have uh, conversions or re- people reverting, from, mm, uh, yeah. reverting to Islam. So a lot happens. Um, and so the masjid, to answer your question more directly, um, it's not only for praying the salahs, though that is the main, the yeah, ultimate and the optimum ibadah that you can do. Of course, standing in salah is there is nothing. The word masjid is the place of exactly sujood, the, right? place, pa- pa- the place of sujood. Yeah, it's also called a jamia, a place of jama'ah where people mm. come together. Um, and so the masjid of the Prophet is the ultimate example, right? Mm. And we find in the masjid of the Prophet there were the salawat, of course. There were the khutbas, of course. Mm. There were the lessons. There were the general uh, hadith lessons, if you like, after yeah. every uh, every uh, every salah or every every now and then, right? And then we'd have um, the istiqbal of the wufud, uh, the uh, hosting and welcoming the visitors from the mm. uh, from the uh, from the tribes, from other tribes, um, uh, from the from the Bedouins, from the um, from the desert, and so welcoming guests. It was a place of salah, a place of education. It was a place of welcoming guests. It was a place um, of uh, dealing with issues, family issues, social issues, so advice and counselling. Mm. It was a place also <clears throat> of um, of decision making, of doing mashwara. It was yeah. the parliament, if you yeah, like, yeah. of the most of the of the um, of the Muslim ummah in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so, if you look at the, if you use, for example, studied a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and mm. focus. Uh, on the parts which, which which speak about the masjid and the things that he used to do mm. in and from the masjid, I think that shows you that it's a very very broad place. And then of course you had people living in the masjid, the ashab al sufa, who used to sit there, they used to sleep there, they used to uh, study there. Uh, food used to come to them, and they sort of you know reliant upon uh, the provisions of others. And so you have tulab al alim. So the madrasa, if you can sort of understand in that sense, a boarding school, if you like, is also attached to that. Um, so it's a very, very vast, vast. Uh, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a very vast range of roles that the masjid fills up. Of course, mm. then addressing, um, like say, if you t- speak about today, then sort of media issues. So you'd have, for example, <coughs> Hassan ibn Thabit, yeah, the, yeah. Po- the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who would also be in the masjid, and I'm sure they would be speaking about the issues, and he would also respond to the kuffar and the mushrikeen mm. with his poetry. So, Shab- Shabid the poet. <laughs> Shabid the poet, of course, yes, yes. You know what, I have... That is true, yes. <laughs> SubhanAllah. <laughs> yeah, so um, it was a, a place of a range of things. Mm. Anything and almost everything that the community needs, the Islamic community needs, for its uh, Islamic needs, right, mm. would be dealt with in the masjid. If, if there was some sort of a judgment, some sort of a decision, some sort of a feud, all of it. Very good. So it's not just a place of worship, but it's like almost like a community hub. Yes. It brings yes, people yes. together, like you said. And actually, just on that note, because with Nord Islam, for example, a huge uh, rebuild project. So um, I, I think basically what Sheikh uh, Ashik just mentioned, kind of like the from what I've seen with the plans of the masjid, is going to incorporate pretty much all of that. And there's so there's like a you have like a community hall and you have other things. So just tell us uh, briefly about that as well. Um. Yeah. So exactly what Sheikh said. You can say most of the things that he said will be in this masjid. Mm. Alhamdulillah. So, Alhamdulillah. Um, the masjid, it, it will, there's going to be, f- at the moment they, they, they're building this masjid. Um, there used to be a few buildings. So they used to have few, few buildings. Um, they knocked them down and they're making one huge project. So the masjid will comprise of four floors. Now, within the floors, one entire floor will be dedicated to sisters. The entire floor. They will have the alima class. Mm. Classes will take place there. Whatever women women's uh, counselling and they have their programs in the in 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 that floor. And um, we have the jamaqana. We have a hall mm. um, for you know different services. Uh, we're going to have a gym. Gym oh, in the masjid. Well. Nice. Yeah. So the sure. gym will be one a, a separate gym for brothers, separate gym for sisters. Nice. Um, when you enter the masjid, so when you enter the masjid on the right hand side, there will be a calf. Oh. A calf. So when you enter. You can, just sit there, chill you can out. sit there. So even this is not just for Muslims, non-Muslims. Oh, sorry, it's not just for Muslims. Mm. Even 
any anyone is allowed to come in the mus in in this on this because the this ground floor um, there will be no type of ibadah will take place there. It will mm. be a, on the right hand side there will be a calf, left hand side there will be uh, a library, mm, okay. and then you have at the back of that f- ground floor we have the nursery. Mm. We have the nursery. Um, the office will be there. Mus- Nur Islam is one of the only masjids, a few masjids like yeah, a few masjids in in London where they have a office, a full time office from morning to evening. You can ring up. And whatever problems you have, you can you know mm. they can help you. Um, within that, you'll have all these services such as um, janaza service, yeah. you know, ghusl khana, and all these. So in general, the masjid will be open. That you know what it is, like Sheikh was saying, which I really liked, is the masjid. Um, just to you know elaborate on what he said, the masjid <clears throat> should be a place where it's opened. Yeah, masjid should be opened. You know, we hear uh, everyone come on out. Straight masjid, after the salah, basically. Yeah, you know, it's, come on out. Put your shoes on. You have to go now. Mm. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Like I don't know. The, the limit, viewers basically. might not like this. I'm. I'm getting a bit worried, but we have to say it because I'm. I'm a bit. I feel a bit uncomfortable. You know, if they say, "Oh, there's no caretaker," well, that is the. That's the role of the masjid. You should get a caretaker. Mm. Massive, huge, two million, five million, ten million pound masjid. The masjid should be open. It mm. Shouldn't be closed. The masjid should be open for for everyone, whoever wants to come. If you if you don't open it, one of the disadvantages. Is look. Let's say a non-Muslim, mm. he wants to learn about Islam. That moment he wants to learn and he wants to revert to Islam. That moment, he doesn't want to delay it the next the next day. Once I was leading Fajr Salah, one brother came to me, tapped me. He said, "Look, there's one brother. He wants to revert." I said, "Bring him." That time I was, I'm a young person. We don't have hikmah. Well, I don't have hikmah yeah. So he said, "I said, bring him in Zohar." Right now, I'm, I'm buzzing like that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know. I'm praying, reading his Salah. <laughs> It's Fajr time But he said No, no, no He, he doesn't want to delay yeah. <laughs> That brother said He he doesn't want to delay He wants to do it now wow. I thought, Okay, no problem Bismillah After after Salah Come forward And then I respect him He, he teaches in the Alima class His name is uh, Mufti Ibrahim mm. I respect him a lot He's a Shaykh al-Hadith of Bukhari He's been teaching for many, many years Solid That's Solid cool. Alim So I requested him <clears throat> Shaykh, come and do, uh, He said No, no, no You're Imam You do it so the kalima. So the point I'm trying to make is: imagine if someone came to a masjid and they have this policy where mm. you come in the masjid, masjid opens, Zohar is at one thirty, uh, masjid opens at one o'clock. That's when the masjid opens. Nice, beautiful masjid, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. chandeliers and everything. Nice carpet, <laughs> blue carpet. You know, I, I, for some reason I like blue blue carpet. I don't know why. Just <laughs> and the brown musalla as well. <laughs> and the br- yeah, we need the brown musalla. <laughs> brown musalla on top of blue carpet. Allah. So you know, and then the masjid after one thirty. Salah will take place in exactly half an hour. There yeah. is, in some masajid, there's actually signs. There's signs where it says 30 minutes must you be closed. They only have madrasa and they only have the salawat. Mm. Now, people might find this offen- offensive, but that's not exactly a role model masjid. Mm. A role mod- model masjid is exactly what Sheikh said, where you, you, you're allowed, you're, if you have any issues, problems, you can go to the masjid, talk to someone, speak to someone, sit down, you have durus, you have, you have lessons. Mm. When, you know, in some masajid, when you want <clears> to, <throat> when you go for bayan, I, I, go, I go for speeches at times, different masajid. Mm. So when you go there, it's less people. And I think about it, to me, it's not a big deal. I'm go, uh, my job is to go there, give a little bayan, depends who they are. At times I go to a masjid and they, they, they give me a youth topic. I go there and guess who's there? Everyone's old. So I just change the topic and I just speak about something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I just change the topic. Yeah, sure, so so <clears throat> we realise. Yeah, it's freestyling. That's why I do freestyling. So what is the, the point I'm trying to make is is at times at times we we, we, we have this question in our mind mm. that why are youngsters not coming for yes. in certain masajid? Why are, why are more youngsters going to this masjid? If, for example, East London Mosque. If you go there, you will see all types of people, youngsters and everyone is there's a big community there. Why? Because mm. they have they have certain uh, classes, certain services, and that attracts these people. Mm. In today's day and age, which <clears throat> most probably you will ask, but we wait for that, inshallah, is this, this th- there is a huge problem out there. You know, mm. The masjid are not getting full with youngsters. If you look around, they're old people. It's a big issue. And alhamdulillah, we have the old people and we need them as well mm. for the hikmah. We need them for their, for, for their du'as. But what about when they pass away? The, the next generation. The next generation. Mm. So it's, we have to question about this, and a masjid where they have not, they have not thought about these services. It's actually alarming. 
Mm. It's for us to think about and sit down, and, you know, and and ponder over this. Stuff. Why are these masjids? Uh, why are why do they not have certain services? Mm. Why are they not open? <clears throat> First and foremost, let alone the services. Why don't they open the masjid? Mm. I mean, to, of course, to to balance it. By the way, we're going to come back to the point about the yeah. youth. To balance it, of course, not every mosque has the facilities. You know, not every mosque has the capacity to facilitate for everything and to be open. <clears throat> so we we understand that, of course. I think uh, we're mainly talking about the ideal scenario yeah. where a masjid could facilitate and has that space and allows, of course, men, children, women as well, everyone from different backgrounds to have all of these, you know, facilities and activities. So that's that's definitely without a shadow of a doubt. But coming back to the youth issue, that is a huge issue because at the beginning you mentioned as well that we have, subhanAllah, and may Allah protect us, but there are many youngsters who are leaving the religion. They are leaving Islam and, you know, there are many youngsters who, who might even feel afraid to approach people like us, you know, an imam. Because they feel like, you know, this guy, he, has, he, he, he dresses a certain way, he leads the prayers. I don't want to bother him with my problems because he won't even be able to relate to my problems, you know. Like, I'm going to be talking about Netflix and, you know, this and that. And I'm going to be talking about relationships. But this guy, he, he's only going to be speaking about maybe Quran and, you know, he's going to be talking about spirituality. So th- there's like that disconnect between the imam and this young person growing up in 21st century Britain, for example, or in the West. So... Like, how do we, what's, is there a solution, firstly? Like, there's no point asking, what's the solution? Is there a solution? Is it straightforward? Why aren't uh, the youngsters coming to the mosque? I know I'm throwing different questions at you, but no, let's just good, have man. that it's discussion good, it's because good. it's much needed discussion. <clears throat> Sheikh, do you want to go no. first? Um, that is probably the, the gist of the problem, the essence mm. of it, the crux of it, because um, connecting, right? Uh, to answer your question in short, is there a way? There might not be, but we need to find one. Mm. There has to be a way. There has to be. Yeah. There has to be a way. Um, and, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends Rusul, Anbiya, messengers, and we are messengers in the sense of we're conveying the message of Islam mm. to our community. Um, we have not sent a prophet, a messenger, and we are obviously al-ulama waratatul anbiya. The scholars are the inheritors of the anbiya. And I'm not saying I'm alim, but of course, talab al-ilm, in that sense, connected. Mm. Uh, and so, uh, that we are, he has not sent any messenger except for that they know the language, the culture. And lisan here doesn't just mean lugha, because mm-hmm. he could have said lugha, but he said lisan. And lisan entails culture, entails what's their norm, what's what they're up to, what they like, what they dislike. Mm-hmm. So their culture generally. And so for us to be able to connect to our communities... We must be experts of our communities. And so that's, that, that goes back to your first question yeah, of yeah. why did you choose to serve your own community? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's precisely the reason because you are most well learned about your community. And so we find that the Anbiya were sent to their own nations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? And so we find that the Anbiya were sent to their own people. Mm-hmm. And that is, that is the point. That you, you have that common ground. You know what to say that will affect. And if you don't know, then maybe that's not your job. Let's be, let's be, let's be honest. Yeah? Mm. If you're not good at the job, if you can't connect to the youth, then you know, find out a way. And yet, if you don't want to, if you want to be lazy or if you can't, then think about how you can get advice on board. Mm. And maybe if you're not cut out for the job, and I'm talking about myself included, mm. maybe I should move away and let someone else do the job. Because mm. that job has to be done. The imam and the masjid, uh, those who are leading the community in Salon, of course, in their daily activities as well, uh, they need to be able to connect to their people. And uh, ways must be sought out, whether it be uh, through social media, mm. whether it be through <clears throat> talks, whether it be by literally carrying yourself with your young people, especially in a more humorous, more sort of relaxed, mm. open-minded way. Mm. And so this is something that is sort of a secret, I'll tell you now. Mm. And it needs to be said because you're speaking about this particular topic. Yeah. You've got to understand that when you're an imam, you must be seen as an example by everyone in the community. Yeah. Okay. And depending on where you come from and which generation, which age group, which ethnicity you come from, the person that you seem or deem respectable differs. Mm-hmm. And so in our British culture, in American culture, you can be hugely respectable and yet be a humorous guy. Yeah. You can be cracking jokes and it's fine and you're just dressing simply and just walking around and it's still fine because people look at sort of what's your profession, what do you know, your yeah. character. But if you look for example at Egypt or Bangladesh or even Pakistan and India, our culture demands that for you to be respectable, 
You need to carry yourself in a physical particular way. Mm. You need to look like a particular person. Your smiling, your laughing has to be limited. If you joke too much, you're just, you're just an idiot in that sense, mm. if you like. And so because there is a range of cultures, you need to be flexible in how you deal with people depending on whom you are or who you are dealing with. Okay. And so the secret is, my personal secret is, when I am around our elderly and sort of the more mature members of our community, I have to be a bit more sort of slow, mm. a bit more heavy, a bit more relaxed, a bit more calm, uh, uh, less comedy, more seriousness, because that's what, that, that's what it is. That's what an imam is to them. Mm. And so, of course, I can be that person. It's not a problem. That's not to say that you're two-faced. It means that you are sufficing, you are be attending to the needs of the people. Mm. When it comes to the younger people, you, you can't just do the same act as you are doing with the elderly people. They'll, they'll run away. And so with the younger people, like you said, share a cup of tea, relax, crack a joke. Show them that you know. Sometimes you need to sort of uh, let people know that you know. In your khutbas, in your discussions, show them that, yes, I do know about Netflix. Yes, I do know about Muhammad Salah. Yes, I do know about, you know, Khabib uh, Nur Magomedov and the uh, UFC fight that happened. I, know, I do know about this stuff. Mm. So that you're sort of on a, on a level, you know, you've got that common ground, that culture is there. And I think once they know, they'll feel more, you, you will be more approachable to the, to the community, regardless of their ages. And, and yet there are challenges. Mm. And we need to still work towards finding solutions for them, namely uh, our sisters, yeah. you know. Uh, an imam is there and mashallah very accessible to the male members of the community but what do you do about the sisters do you just say that she can also come into the main and ask questions like the women perhaps we can't because there are some restrictions there so how do we deal with that problem mm -hmm. does that make sense so there are challenges that we still need to face uh, face up to and, and, and answer uh, questions to uh, there are the issues of you know atheism and conversions or leaving islam like you said and that happens usually in university so is it that this imam just needs to stay in the masjid or should he also go to the universities and speak to people there and deliver mm. lectures and khutbas within the uh, prayer spaces in the universities and ISOCs and etc. So these are all uh, researches and uh, to be done and talks to to have and you know yeah, yeah. Uh, ways to find solutions for inshallah. Inshallah. No, it's it's good. To, uh, I mean, like like we said, this discussion is needed because we can't just kind of brush it aside and, and ignore the problem, right? Because it's there and it's, it's on our doorstep. It's not even like it's happening and or it's going to happen. It's on our doorstep, literally. So it's important. So coming to Sheikh Ibrahim, again, you've already mentioned that so many youngsters approach you, they come up to you and they have all sorts of issues. So like, you know, what are you trying to, make, to maybe do different? What's the message trying to do different to try and attract the, the, the youth or the youngsters? Yeah, so just like Sheikh said, beautiful way they explained it, mashallah. So what I do is exactly what he said, is I try to, you know, intermingle with these kids, mm. with these youngsters. I mentioned to you before, you know, when I first came to the masjid, 2014, mm. my first salah was Fajr. Yeah. So I walked in um, and I went to lead the salah. Uh, there's one brother there, his name is Abdul Rahim. Mm. He's mostly watching this soon, inshallah. <laughs> so this brother, Abdul Rahim, is a lovely brother. And, you know, we sit down, we have a proper laugh. You know, whenever I'm driving, he thinks I'm a bit crazy. <laughs> when I'm driving, what I do, beep, beep. <laughs> Just, he was thinking, Imam, you know, beep. Everything good, mashallah. So we're very tight. Yeah, yeah. So this brother, now we're really, we're very close now. Very, very tight, inshallah. alhamdulillah. So this brother, he said, oh, you know, when I first saw you, when you first came to this masjid, Brother, I thought, this guy's serious. <laughs> Just looked at this brother's face and, brother, this guy looks too serious. We have the wrong imam here. <laughs> I mean, this guy, he looks proper serious. Yeah. After... It's probably just uh, Fajr time, isn't it? Maybe it's Fajr time. <laughs> yeah, you know, oh, but, then, tired, oh, yeah. but maybe, that could be... But then, after when I even came for Dhuhar and Asr, I think he, yeah. he, he thought, you yeah, know, yeah, just yeah. in general, he thought, this guy's serious. Mm. But after a few weeks, a few mm. months, I used to stay, I stay in the masjid from Asr to Maghrib. Sit there, read some Quran, sit with the brothers, talk to them every without without fail every Sunday. I don't think I've ever been home after Sunday. It's literally mm -hmm. five years. I sit there and we talk. Some brothers, we sit down, we have tea. So then the brother said to me, "Oh man, you're not the you're not the the, the image that." I said, what do you mean? Oh, when you first came, and then he explained the whole story to me. Mm -hmm. When you first came, you were serious and you were just chilled out, you know, sitting with us. I said, "Yeah, what do you think I am? Some." Some uh, is Islamic or Batman or something, <laughs> <laughs> maybe Islamic Spiderman. I don't know. I, I don't know. It, it doesn't work like that, you know. We we are we are normal people. So, but the question you ask is 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 it's a beautiful question. It's yeah. how can we, yeah. how can we, get these youngsters to think and or to get them to acknowledge that we're we're normal people. Mm. That's a very important question, and I think that the, the best way is is or one of the ways is just to, in your speeches, in your in your khutbah, in your 
when they speak to you, you know, just to speak on the level, mm. to speak to them, you know, like like a friend, not speaking like a, like an imam or, or speaking because with these young, you know, if we go back twenty years, it's, it was a different vibe. Mm. This is twenty nineteen. We have such problems, which is on such a scale, which we I don't know what the imams are gonna do now. You know, um, the masjid that you are that you were at yeah. previously, Kanhu. So, uh, Imam Zia Rahman, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, he, he's excellent. I've been knowing him a long time. <laughs> I've been knowing him since, uh, you Inshallah. know, I don't want to mention then, yeah, but yeah, he, yeah. he was a, he's very, very tight. <laughs> and he, I invited him recently to my masjid. Alhamdulillah, Inshallah. I said to him, You're definitely coming again. He was fantastic, and um, he mentioned an excellent point. And I think because a lot of trustees were sitting there, this wasn't my masjid, but this was Masjid Umar. And I think he just blasted them. <laughs> 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 I hope he's gonna watch this. Here. I'm not even lying. Wallah, he's gonna watch this. A lot of the trustees were sitting there, and I was getting scared. I was thinking, I think You're these guys will never—they will never let me organize a speech again or a little program. But that was a big conference, and he, but in a way, it was good. Mm. Some things need to be said at times, and he didn't—he wasn't extreme. He said certain points, and that's his opinion, and I agree with him. Mm. And the way he said it was good, and he was very—he was angry, passionate, and, very passionate, yeah. and he was saying, you know. The Imam walks in and he walks out. Someone comes to him, he does no no after come Asr time. He comes Asr, I'll come Maghrib time, come Maghrib, come Fajr time, Fajr come next year. I think, what is this? The brother don't know what's going on. He's and then then they then they expect the Imam to be, you know, a role yeah. model. And mm-hmm. then they expect the Imam to be respected. No, they won't be respected because you're not giving that service to them, you're not giving that time to them. Mm-hmm. So that point was very it hit me because at times I do that. Mm-hmm. But the only reason I do that at times is because maybe I need to come back for the next salah. But generally I don't do that, alhamdulillah. After mm-hmm. Isha. Uh, I'm not boasting, alhamdulillah, That's maybe because I want people to understand that we don't, you know, all imams do yeah, this. Yeah. We don't want this this negative picture of imams, uh, you know, they walk in, they walk out. What is this? So I am actually the first person for salah, alhamdulillah. Mm. And I'm the last person. Alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. So I, I like doing this. If anyone wants to talk, we're there. Um, but going back to the question you asked, look, I'm doing this, but at times it's still not working. Mm. The youngsters are still not coming to us. So we need a solution, but... It's, uh, it's uh, like we Should said, it's not... Should be the poet. I think we need to make a little poet, a little poetry for <laughs> us. Come on, man. Tell us so we can feel good. Subhanallah. <laughs> you know, we, 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 obviously we said initially, like, we, you know, this discussion is not going to solve the problem. Of course, We're not of saying course. that, you know, we have the answers to everything, you know. There are there are problems in, in not just, we're not just talking about the, in the imam, in the role of the imam and then the masjid. We're talking about anywhere, right? There's problems and, and there's issues and there's challenges. I think challenges is a better word. Um, but... This is a discussion which is needed and subhanAllah like there's so there's so many other things on my mind that I want to discuss, but we're coming towards the end of the of the show, which and I want to end with something um you know, something more practical, I guess. Which is um there are many other Imams out there, especially the younger Imams who were born in this country and maybe whether they studied in this country, like yourself, Sheikh Ibrahim, or they studied abroad like Sheikh Ashkur Rahman, regardless, right? But they've come back now and maybe they're not sure what to do or maybe they are imams but they're facing their own challenges they don't know how to deal with it and with some people it puts them off like they're thinking i don't even want to do this anymore you know there's there's too many challenges of course, of course. so i think it would be nice uh, to just kind of round off this discussion to get some practical tips from yourselves from your experiences um what would you say to any other imams maybe listening especially those who are younger um to encourage them and uh, maybe a few a few pointers from your own experiences she has more. He has more experience than me. So I want to mention this one point, <laughs> and <laughs> and he will say the rest. I think you've been no, around for much longer. No, no. no so what that. it is? So I think what this young person should do, he should think about the the qualities which he has. Yeah. What knowledge can he to uh, what, what can he convey, and think of the reward. I think if he does this, then he will think of a bigger picture. Some people think of money. They mm. think it's less money, or we haven't got you know how are we gonna live with with Imam. Yeah, and this is what they think at times. Um, they need to think of the positive things. Be positive about this. Don't think of the negative. Uh, don't think of what people tell you about. Oh, Imam gets looked upon, and he has to do this. He has to lead the tarawih mm-hmm. salah. He has to do khutbah. He has to be there for janaza. He has to do everything. No, these are all. These are positives, but they can be taken as negative. Think about all the positive things, and the main positive thing is that the reward. Mm-hmm. If you help someone, even for wudu, let's say you help someone for wudu. He doesn't know all the wudu that he will do for the rest of your life. You will get the reward and the salah and the, and the worship, salah and, and, everything, and everything else for that matter. So this is one 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 tip that a, a young person should do. Like especially the point that Sheikh made at the beginning is, I've had I've had this um, this opinion since since uh, you know day one mm. about 
when someone leaves Darul Uloom, we should try our best to be connected to something at least. Like my teachers always say, be connected to something. I have friends of unfortunately, I know Allah gives them hidayah. They've left everything. Like they've studied mm. for 10 years, but they work in a grocery shop. and th- Which is, like he said, is no problem. I have some of my teachers who used to work in a grocery shop, Tesco, anything. But the point is, only doing that? that mm. is, it, it, your parents sent you to a Darul Uloom to study Islam, spent thousands thousands mm. upon thousands and now you're working in a place where it's nothing related to to your mm. to to your profession uh, as in give something back give even something if it's on back. the side you it doesn't know, have to be, be imamat be it doesn't have to be imamat it doesn't mm. have to be madrasa it could be something so small mm. um but at least you're doing something <clears throat> yeah. to, give to give back to give back to, to the to community back. yeah so i think what you're saying also is to think long term as well not just think yeah. you know which is unfortunate and maybe things are slowly changing but you know the fact that it's not really a career path that people look up to you know, like no, when I when I finish my studies, I want to become an imam. It's not really a career, but people think you become an imam. You know, you're not going to get like you said. It's it's not a great wage, and you know, it's 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 for a certain type of people. You know, who can't get, land the the bigger roles or the bigger jobs. Unfortunately, there's this perception, so it's not really looked as the career path. But what you're saying is, think long term, the benefits that you can really t- uh, take from it yourself. And the benefit that you can provide to uh, the, the the community as well. So I think that's a really good point, uh, <laughs> Sheikh. Yeah, Allah. Um, <clears throat> so generally, advice and tips towards like um, other fellow uh, brothers um, and of course sisters who can also serve the community in terms of ilm. Um, and so giving advice and tips to our you know fellow um, students of knowledge. I think there's a lot to be said, and obviously we need to sort of wrap up. So I'll try mm-hmm. to make it quick. First of all, one of the points you've made was that. Being an imam is not something popular. Mm. It's not something fashionable. There isn't much in it for me to want to become an imam. Ultimately, what makes your life a happy life? In the dunya sense, you want to have, of course, your spirituality there. But of course, mainly what really defines it is your quality of life. How much sort of you know time can you spend with your family? Mm. How much uh, money can you spend on them? Um, how comfortable are you? What, what what can you wear? What can you where where can you go? You know, every, every now and then you want to go somewhere with your family. So these money is a big issue. And so the first point is, inshallah, on the long run, as a community, as an ummah, we need to make the imam's job a fashionable job. Mm. It needs to become a popular job. Because if we want to attract young ulama to become role model imams, then we need to have their, have something there for them to, for them to, for them to want to achieve. Mm. And so why not? An imam should be able to drive an M3. Mm. Why not? An imam should be able to wear, mm. you know, uh, uh, a Gucci blazer every now and then. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Subhanallah. Yeah. You know, this, there's not. It's not haram. And so, therefore, because these are things that put you off. And often, if you are, for example, wearing something nice or smelling some in an, uh, 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 of a nice fragrance, and if your intention is that I want to promote this role, that imam's mm. job is something great, then I'm, I'm sure, inshallah, Azza wa Jalla, you will get reward for that because you are promoting good. You know, wa ta'awanu ala al-birri wa taqwa aid one another for bir for achieving a high level of iman and taqwa for 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 good consciousness and good fearing uh, being good fearing and so uh, we need to make the imam's role a fashionable one mm-hmm. something that people want to become uh, people want to become football players because it pays a lot of money of course we can't pay the same amount mm-hmm. but of course we can make it somewhat you know at least 25k for a decent side masjid decent size uh, 30k these are con- normal amounts that you'd get for yeah. driving a bus uh, for doing a very normal job which requires little qualification and this person mashallah he's dedicated his life and he is going to be guiding your community to Jannah mm. subhanallah and if you're aiding that then subhanallah you know it's, it's, it's a huge thing so that's the first point second point is from us for our side from our side mm. from the students of knowledge side ya akhi you've studied mashallah you've read the Quran of Azza, Allah Azza Jal. You've, you've read the Ahadith of the Prophet sallam and we know, as students of knowledge, that our priority is not the dunya. Mm. We know that. Khalas? Um, look at all of the Anbiya. Look at their lifestyles. How much money did they have in their savings? The Prophet Sallallahu he would be a multi-billionaire in the morning and by evening he'd become a miskin again. Mm. Because he'd give it all out. This is, this, these are our role models. Look at Ahmed bin Hanbal, rahimahullah. He was suffering for financial reasons throughout. There were only a few people in history from the ulama that were, mashallah, very well. Mashallah, Imam Hanifa was an exception. Mm. So he was, mashallah, very wealthy too. <laughs> but of yeah. course, from the Sahaba as well, they were very... Um, Abu Huraira, the biggest rawi of the hadith, was perhaps the most poorest of the Sahaba. Mm. Uh, subhanallah, so we see this time and again. Um, so money is not... It can't be the ultimate goal. Otherwise, what have I learned? 
What has the Quran taught me? Okay. Walal akhiratu khayrun laka minal ula. Yeah. The verily, the hereafter is better than better for you than the uh, the current life. And so we need to look beyond the dunyawi limited measures and what we see as a spectacle, as something beautiful in dunya. And we have to look for and aim for the akhirah. Number one. Number two, I'm dragging, I know. Uh, let me just finish, inshallah. Um, when Allah chose you to study the Quran, and Allah chooses you to study the Quran, Allah chooses you. Right? Allah has to teach, Even the Prophet وسلم, could not give guidance to his uncle, right? Mm-hmm. Or to anybody because hidayah and that want, the inclination, the love of, of the Quran, of studying, and etc., yeah? it has to come from Allah. So for you, perhaps it was your parents forcing you or sort of encouraging you strongly. And everyone has to do that to their uh, children now and then for, for whichever form of success they want for them. But in any case, Allah chose you. I can guarantee you that Allah did not choose you to become a alim, a graduate, a farigh, mm. right? From a Darul Ulum or from a, uh, from a university of Medina or of Azhar or whatever, or even local Madaris, mashallah, right? He did not choose you to become a lunatic Liverpool fan. <laughs> that wasn't your main Sunday job that he chose you for. Khalas. And your job wasn't to just talk about cars all the time. Yes, of course, the Prophet used to love horses. Mm. And that's cars of our time. How many horsepower? We even say that, right? <laughs> and so there's not a problem. But our priorities have to be correct. Yeah. Our priorities have to be correct. That yes, as long as, alhamdulillah, my job of imamat or serving the deen or, or teaching or conveying or writing or uh, doing ilm feed, right? Mm. As long as it's, mashallah, okay for me to some extent, then alhamdulillah. And if you look historically, the students of knowledge have always been multitaskers. Definitely. So the Sahaba were on the one hand, Tujjar, mm-hmm. some of them, businessmen, and then they were part-time students, and then they were also family men, and they were also at the same time other things, <clears throat> right? So you have to be a multitasker. Mm. That's how a Muslim person is. You are, you are like the honeybee, right? Mm. Allah gives the example of the honeybee. And the honeybee, what does it do? In order for it to make the honey, it goes to various different flowers. It doesn't just go and kill one flower. And so, yes, you might need a part-time job and a full-time job and a uh, part-time lesson here and there and something for free, something voluntary. <laughs> but that's how you have to be. You have to sort of spread the good and get the goodness from everywhere, uh, if that makes any sense. So we have to look beyond the dunya, we shahawat and the, and the thing that make, uh, to, uh, make, make dunya seem so, uh, so beautiful. But at the same time, we do not have to become completely disconnected and become, you know, someone who is of badada and has got no iron clothes and no, <laughs> uh, no shoes working with sandals in winter. No, we have to be approachable, look formal, look respectable. Um, and so it has to be a, a very, very good balance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability. I mean, I mean, honestly, uh, I've really enjoyed this uh, episode, actually. I think it's given a really good insight into uh, the role of the imam. And uh, I think especially for, for, for those who are listening and, and for those who are watching, I think many of you, I, I, I'm very sure and I'm quite certain that you actually had no idea, you know, where <laughs> half the stuff that the imams have to do or the challenges that they face or, you know, in terms of their day-to-day, um, you know, roles and responsibilities. I'm pretty sure that many of us just assumed what exactly what I said at the beginning, which was leading the salah, which we said and we established that definitely is a very noble job and is one of the best things that Allah could honor you with. But there's so much more to it. So I think one thing that I would add to, to everything that's just been said is for those of you who do attend the mosque regularly, whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you're, you're male, female, regardless, right? try to maybe connect with your imam as well. So we can't just expect and put too much expectation on the imam, but maybe we need to sometimes go and speak to the imam. You know, like, Salikum, how are you doing? You know, thank you so much for leading the prayer. Show some appreciation to the imam maybe. Um, yeah, or, or treat them to some food, you know. <laughs> Take them out for a meal. <laughs> Straight to the point. Arranging the next exactly. few meals. <laughs> so, so, yeah, all of this is needed, I think. And uh, connect with them and utilize them in the best of way. Honor them as well because Allah SWT has honored them. And, uh, yeah, and I think, you know... Honestly, there's not much more for me to say other than Barakallah Thank you so Mashallah, much. You've asked the right question. <laughs> you've led the discussion in a very beautiful way. Allah accept from you. May Allah SWT bless and, you both. And uh, Mawlana Sawa of course, is behind the ilm. <laughs> we have the people in the background as well, alhamdulillah, as, as always. Um, thank you so much again for your time. I know we've taken your time out of your busy imam schedules that we've been speaking about. So this is part of the role of the imam. You have to do interviews and you have to, <laughs> of course, you do. You have yes, to, you have to connect. Like we said, the language of the people is also nowadays social media. So of you have to definitely. do this as well so thank you so much and of course you know we wish you all the best with your um, future activities with the masajid and uh, any way that we can support as well inshallah we'd be more than happy to we hope uh, 
everyone has enjoyed this episode. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the Umfi channel. Make sure you check out the work that the uh, our imams and our scholars are doing in their local mosques. Support them as well, inshallah. Uh, subscribe on iTunes. Spread the word, inshallah. We're going to be back soon with another episode. I've been your host, Shabir, and I will see you all soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.